Today's presentation is about understanding the fundamentals of your camera. We're going to go over the different parts of your film manual camera and uh, we'll learn about the exposure triangle and how you can use the different settings on your camera to expose the film um, in the best ways. I'm going to start with the camera obscura. Some of you may be familiar with the idea of the camera obscura, especially if you've taken um, a painting, drawing, art history class, or maybe even a natural science class. The camera obscura is um, a term, um, a Latin term, that means dark box, and it refers to um, a natural phenomenon that takes place um, when there is a dark room or a dark space and um, a small hole letting in light into a dark room. As you can see in this illustration, um, the, the small hole in the dark box or dark room lets in the sunlight and projects an image, an upside down image, of the surroundings outside of the box. Also in this image you can see um, a, an artist who is tracing uh, or drawing the image that's being projected from the outside on the inside of the box. The idea of the cameras that we use today comes from this idea of the camera obscura or the dark box. So the cameras that you're using today um, and the cameras that um, have been used for um, for decades are based on this idea of the camera obscura. Um, the cameras are basically a, a light tight black box with a small hole in it that lets in light. And what we're gonna talk about today are some of the ways that you can control the light that comes into the hole, how it comes into the hole, how long it comes into the hole, and the different effects um, that the light has on, on your image and the way that your image looks. So let's start by taking out your camera and we're going to look at the different parts of your camera and get familiar with, um, with what you have and um, where it is. So again, the camera is essentially a black box. Um, the hole that lets in light is the lens, which is on the front. Um, there is a, um, two rings on the lens. Um, one of the rings um, moves and lets you focus your image. That's called the focus ring. The other ring um, lets you adjust how big the hole is in the lens that lets in light. That's called your aperture or f-stop. So try to find those on your lens, play around with them, move them, see how it works. Um, we also have the shutter on the top right of your camera. Um, the shutter or shutter release is the button that um, opens up the hole in the lens and allows the light to come into the camera. The shutter is where you'll adjust how long that um, shutter or curtain is open, letting in light into your camera. And after you take a picture, you'll need to advance your film. Um, and there's a lever next to the shutter uh, where your thumb would naturally sit to help you advance um, each frame of film to the next one. Um, in the back, we also have a um, usually a lever or a button um, that will allow you to open the back of the camera so that you can insert the film. And when you open up the back of the camera, you'll see um, a place on the left where your film canister will be inserted. And then a spool called the take-up spool on the right where we're going to um, insert your film and use the film advanced lever to advance your film after you take each picture. Next, I'd like to start with um, the, this idea of the exposure triangle. Um, in photography, we have um, three different ways to expose or allow light to hit the film in your camera. Um, so just as we saw the painter or the artist in the image of the camera obscura tracing the image um, that's being projected inside the camera obscura, your camera is going to have film, or in the case of digital cameras, will have a digital sensor that is um, 
recording or um, absorbing the light um, that is being let into the camera. The exposure triangle are, uh, is the three different ways that you can allow light into your camera. We're going to start at the top with ISO and then we'll talk about shutter speed and aperture, which is also called f-stop. So what is ISO? Uh, first of all, you can find it um, on your camera or find how to adjust it on your camera by looking next to the shutter button. On most cameras, you'll see um, a knob um, next to the shutter button that has, um, has some numbers on it that we're gonna go over later. And then usually there's an adjustment that's called ISO, or sometimes on older cameras, you'll see it called ASA. And um, you'll see some different numbers that correspond to ISO. Um, in the picture here, we see the ISO or ASA is set to 100. So ISO is an abbreviation, which stands for the Numerical Exposure Index of a Photographic Film under the system adopted by the International Standardization Organization. And it's used to indicate the light sensitivity of a film's emulsion, or again, in the case of digital cameras, um, the digital sensor. So what exactly does that mean? Uh, well, the light sensitivity of a film um, or digital sensor means um, how well or how much it responds to the light that you let into your camera. In this example, we see uh, four different images of the same subject um, taken with different uh, ISO. Um, we see ISO 200 in the bottom right. It's a very dark image and moves up to ISO 3200, a lighter image. So nothing is changing um, in the exposure triangle except for ISO. So we see that if you're using an ISO of a lower number, 200 in this case, um, you need a lot of light to expose your, um, your image properly. If you're using a higher ISO, in this case 3200, you need less light to um, expose your image properly because the higher the ISO, the more sensitive it is to light. So if the easy fix in all lighting situations is to just make your ISO higher so your film is more sensitive to light, why don't we just leave our ISO high or always use a high ISO and be done with it? Well, the answer is grain. You can see in this image, there are two um, pictures of the same image. One was taken with a low ISO, 200. The other on the right was taken with a high ISO, 3200. Do you see a difference in the two images? The image on the left is smooth, and the image on the right has a texture. Um, and we call this texture grain, or we call the texture grainy. So we can see all these tiny little dots that are making up this image, as opposed to the image on the left, where we see a smooth gradation between color and tone. On digital cameras, we use the term noise or noisy to describe the same, um, the same result. So as the ISO goes up in number, the higher the number, the more grain or more grainy your image will look. So again, on the left, we see a smooth image with a low ISO of 100. On the right, we see a grainy or noisy image with a higher ISO of 1600.